Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be breaking down a new storm that will be bringing an increased risk of severe weather to parts of the United States over the next couple of days. This will bring the risk for significant damaging winds, large hail, and perhaps a few tornadoes. I'll be giving the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this weather forecast, but let's first begin with what's happening across the United States today. And we'll first begin with the southeast United States, and this is where we've had a huge cluster of storms that's been rolling through areas in the southern plains, and it's now moving into the Dixie Alley, and this is going to continue to move down to the east-southeast, bring some isolated severe weather throughout the early afternoon hours. Right now, you'll notice all the convection, all that white area there representing very high cloud tops aloft. That means that there are some thunderstorms out there, some of which, again, are severe right now. Those will continue to move to the east-southeast, bring the risk for some damaging winds through the early afternoon hours. Now, the storm that just brought that massive severe weather outbreak yesterday is now back up in the northeast, where we've actually already seen a confirmed tornado this morning in parts of southeast Massachusetts, and now that's moving to the north and east. That'll start to move out of the United States entirely, and that tornado risk should diminish by the afternoon hours. Back over into the high plains and as well as into the Rocky Mountains, notice this little feature that's back over near Utah and as well as Wyoming. There's a little low pressure system right now back over that direction, and as this moves to the east, it will bring the threat for a small-scale severe weather outbreak later today with large to very large hail and maybe a few tornadoes being the main concerns and then heading into tomorrow we'll be watching for more of a numerous potential for severe weather back in parts of the southeast United States and the Mississippi Valley this will be something to watch for very closely and we'll be talking about more on what that looks like in just a moment now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next several days and we're going to begin with today's severe weather event which is going to primarily take place across parts of the High Plains and as well as the Southeast United States. As of right now, the Storm Prediction Center has issued an enhanced risk of severe weather, which is a 3 out of 5 on the scale, back over in parts of Northeast Colorado, Southwest Nebraska, and Northwest Kansas. The main concerns across this entire region, including the slight risk of severe weather, will be the threat of some damaging winds, could go as high as 80 miles per hour, by the way, large to very large hail, up to 4 inches in diameter, and as well as maybe a couple of tornadoes, primarily across the enhanced risk region. Then back down in the southeast United States, we are watching for some damaging winds through the early afternoon hours. Could continue to about 4 to 5 o'clock today. Again, damaging winds being the main concern there with maybe a brief tornado, but I don't really foresee that happening today. In terms of the hail threat, that is the main concern today. Notice that's why we have the enhanced risk. It's back up in parts of northeast Colorado. Outside of there, that hatched region that's including a larger chunk of both southwest uh, Nebraska as well as northeast Colorado means that we do have that potential for hail exceeding two inches in diameter, which I just said before, again, we are going to probably be looking at hail up to four inches in diameter with an isolated storm or two. So definitely make sure you're protecting your vehicles there. Damaging wind threat back over in that area is a little bit more increased in that hatched area. That again means that damaging winds up to, if not exceeding 75 miles per hour will be possible in that hatched region. So definitely make sure to protect trampolines, loose line items, all that sort of stuff today. Tornado risk is primarily across a very small region today, but it's definitely noticeable. It'll be in that brown shaded region there that we have that 5% probability, which is a slightly more increased tornado risk. Outside of there, we might see a brief tornado somewhere else back in western or southern parts of Nebraska. But again, overall, the tornado risk is not the most concerning feature today. It'll definitely be the threat for very large hail. Now let's take you hour by hour on what to expect for today in terms of the timing across the central plains. Beginning with around 2-3 o'clock this afternoon, you'll notice there's really not a whole lot of storm activity out there by this time frame, but storms will start to slowly develop back over northern Colorado. These will really start to intensify though by about 3-4 to o'clock. Notice that we'll start to see some Boeing segments of storms and also maybe a couple of semi-discrete supercells. These will be the ones that are producing large hail and again perhaps some damaging winds, maybe an isolated tornado. By around 5-6 o'clock tonight, these storms moving to Nebraska. Again, this is the area that I would be the most concerned about tonight. It's going to be on that southern side of this Boeing segment, and what we'll be watching for is perhaps a discrete, or not really a discrete cell, but more of a semi-discrete cell attached to the bottom line of the storm, and that could actually be the one that produces that tornado risk, as well as some pretty large hail. So we'll have to watch that closely. As we go closer to around 7, 8 o'clock, that moves to the east southeast, and notice again that more intense supercell that the HR model is depicting back up in northwest Kansas. That would be what I'm most concerned about out of this entire 
entire event, but we are still watching for severe weather across this entire region. Eventually getting closer around 9, 10, 11 o'clock tonight, these storms move to the east. After midnight, the storm activity will move into parts of eastern Kansas and Missouri, and that is where we'll be watching for damaging winds as we head into tomorrow, which is the next severe weather event, which I want to caution you, this could upgrade in terms of the threat as we go into the future outlooks, because there is going to be an increased risk of severe weather as we go into wacky weather Wednesday. As of right now, there is a very large slight risk of severe weather from northeast Oklahoma back through Kentucky, Tennessee, northern Mississippi, and Alabama. Again, I would not rule out enhanced risk of severe weather. If there were to be one, it would probably be across parts of Missouri, maybe southern Illinois, and back through western Kentucky. But again, that is subject to change, and the Storm Prediction Center will obviously make the official word on that. In terms of the damaging wind threat, that is really going to be one of the main concerns out of this, will be the damaging winds, especially across southern Missouri. But notice there is a 5% probability for tornadoes. This could go to 10% if all the ingredients are there. But there's a lot of stuff that's going to happen tomorrow, and that could really change the course in terms of what we'll see in terms of severe weather. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in just a moment, because there will be multiple rounds of severe storms. So we're not just talking about one round. We are probably talking at least about two, maybe even three. Here's the low-level jet going into tomorrow. This is one of the main concerns is the low-level jet, which helps to rotate the supercells at the lower levels. And that'll increase the rotation out of some of these storms tomorrow. And notice back down in southern Missouri and northern Arkansas, and that little red area that you're noticing there, that is going to be some strong low-level winds, which will help to rotate these supercells. And again, increasing that tornado risk. And that is the concern for tomorrow in terms of the tornado risk, is that the low-level jet will be strong enough for that tornado risk to be a bit more increased, upwards of 50 knots, which is a bit rare for this time of the year, especially this far down to the south. And then the instability that we'll have, which is basically like putting gasoline into a vehicle, it's what helps to fuel severe storms. That is going to be a concern tomorrow. Instability as high as two to 3,000 joules per kilogram across areas like Arkansas as well as Missouri, which obviously that's going to help fuel these storms and really make them pretty severe if they're able to develop. So that's going to be a big concern for tomorrow. One other thing before I show you the timing is the amount of humidity in terms of the dew point. There's going to be a lot of buoyancy tomorrow, which is going to make a, another big concern here across parts of the Mississippi Valley. Notice the dew points into the mid to maybe even upper 70s. That is very humid weather, which will be able to allow for that severe weather risk. But again, that is really oppressive. Obviously, make sure that you are hydrating yourself tomorrow if you are going outside at all, which I don't see you going outside much because this is what's going to happen tomorrow. We'll be watching for multiple rounds of storms. Notice tomorrow morning around 6 to 7 in the morning, we have a lot of storm activity across Missouri. This could increase the risk for some flash flooding, by the way. Once we get closer around 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, storms continue to move to the east, southeast. We'll be watching for some isolated to maybe widely scattered severe weather out of this activity damaging winds being the main concern but perhaps a brief tornado not being out of the question and then once we get into the afternoon hours things really start to change again that round of storms will move through kentucky and as well as tennessee but notice right around about six to seven o'clock tomorrow evening we have another round of storms firing off and this is what will be more concerning is that we could see the threat for some significant damaging winds and perhaps a couple of tornadoes out of this event depending on what happens here because if that round of storms lasts long enough there might be enough sinking air to prevent some of the severe weather activity but if this line of storms that goes out to the east in the morning is much quicker, we might see that severe weather even more risky than what we're already going to see. So that's why there's a bit more of a concern and maybe that increased severe weather potential. By around 7, 8 o'clock, these storms move to the east again. Damaging winds will be the main concern, but there will be a ch chance for at least a few tornadoes. And eventually getting closer to midnight, these storms are moving through Kentucky, Tennessee, and as well as Arkansas and Missouri. And overnight, that line of storms will move down to the east-southeast, producing mainly a damaging wind threat. And then once we go into tossing trampolines on tall trees, Thursday. Two areas to watch for, one of which will be from the remnants of what we're going to be seeing on Wednesday, and then another risk back up in the northern plains, which will be from our next system, and we'll talk about more on this in our next forecast. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.